Dream Vision 7 Radio Network welcomes Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes, heard every Monday at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Using nearly 200 years of abundant and consistent afterlife evidence, quantum physics, consciousness research, and ancient writings, we seek to understand who and what we are, how reality works, the nature of God, and the meaning and purpose of our lives. Join Roberta weekly to better understand our one reality and gain insights into how we can make the most of the glorious eternal beings that we are. Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm delighted that you're with us today. You know, the single most important development in the second half of the 20th century, when it comes to our finally being able to understand the greater reality in which we live, the the, the event that made it all possible was the publication in 1975 of a book called Life After Life. It was really only in the previous 15 years or so that technology had advanced to the point where people close to death were being resuscitated in hospitals in some numbers. And a young physician named Raymond Moody, I believe he was a resident at the time, he noticed that a few of these people who had been brought back from almost dying were talking about wonderful experiences they had while they were almost dead. He assembled some of their stories and he coined the term, he coined the term near-death experiences. And then he published Life After Life. When I told you my story last week, I told you that I had been trying since I was eight years old to understand my own experiences of light. I had figured out that these experiences had to have come from where the dead were, and I was trying to understand how I could figure out what that was like, but I wasn't having much love. Look, I was 29 years old, and I was pretty frustrated, and then life after life burst upon the world, and suddenly the floodgates of after-death information really opened. By the early 80s, there was a whole raft of books that were being published about the afterlife, and I was able at last to do some deep research, so I owe so much to Dr. Raymond Moody. What I had had was not a near-death experience. What I had had was actually a contact from my primary spirit guide. I know that now. But what Dr. Raymond Moody did, which was so amazing, was that he opened our minds to the fact that there's a whole lot more going on than we have ever imagined. And he did it in such a way that it was accessible to people. It was a very exciting time, late 70s, early 80s, and I owe a lot to Dr. Moody. In fact, I think we all do. Um, eventually, I did actually meet him. We shared dinner and conversation several years ago, so I got to tell him in person what a hero he was for me. Mm-hmm. Then in the spring of 2017, Seek Reality hosted Lisa Smart. Her final words project, very fascinating, had resulted in a wonderful book called Words at the Threshold, What We Say as We're Nearing Death. And now both of these pioneers, we're hoping we'll hear from Dr. Moody, but Lisa's already with us. Both of these pioneers in the field of near death have teamed in a new project called the University of Heaven. And I'm excited they've chosen Seek Reality as one of the venues where they're breaking this wonderful news. Welcome to both of you. Let me know if you hear from Dr. Moody. We're hoping he'll call in. Um, But Lisa is here. here. Consider yourself virtually hugged. I just beamed in from the from the (laughs) Eastern. Yes. I I love it. I love it. I heard the whole thing, so yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity, really. (laughs) I'm so Um, glad you're here. And thank you so much too for the kind words and um, But the thing is I really meant it. Until you broke the ice. The the whole notion of it, of understanding anything about what what is really going on was just beyond anybody's pale. I mean, it was, it, frankly, um, I, as I said, I don't know if you heard me say, yours was the most important book of the second yeah, half. Yeah, I, I did, and thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's talk. 
talk a little bit about that book. Um, it, well, may people- I say, too, I, in terms of the, and I am just so grateful to you that, you, you know, that I, you said those words about my work inspiring you. And <laughs> maybe I should sort of, you know, send that along and say that the person who inspired me in it was Plato because see yeah the truly truly I had I was not in a religious family uh, because we were afraid of snakes no no I'm just I made that last part up (laughs) but but uh, we didn't you know religion was not our thing and so I didn't the idea of an afterlife I never even thought that anybody took it seriously but when I went to the University of Virginia at age 18 I majored in philosophy my first book I read in my in my first few days of University of Virginia uh, studying philosophy was Plato's Republic which is about near death experiences believe it or not that's really what it, yeah it culminates in this amazing Plato talks about the different ways that the the ancient Greeks thought that you could get to the other world which they thought of like we tend to think of up right because of Plato actually was the person who put it up yeah upwards but before then it was downwards in the underworld and yes. there was different yes. kinds of journeys they thought that were the way they could get there well there were different ways the three ways but the third way was some they knew that sometimes people would almost die and be re- and they, these early philosophers were very interested in this. See, this is, believe it or not, this is one of the foundations of Western way of thinking is the Greek philosophers who studied these things. And they, Democritus, who lived about the same time as Plato, see, he's the one who, who sprouted the opposite explanation. See, Plato said, yeah, this really indicates an afterlife, but but um, Democritus said, no, this is just the residual biological activity of the body. Like today, people say uh, it's the oxygen deprivation, right? right? So that was my inspiration. And then three years later in 1965, the, the other person who inspired me was the first living person I heard a near-death experience from. I only knew them before from the context of the early Greek reports, and I didn't realize it was anything to do with modern America. And so I um, heard Dr. Ritchie's story, and then I got a Ph.D. in philosophy. I started teaching at East Carolina University, began to hear these from my students and my colleagues, and uh, then went on. After three years of teaching philosophy, went to medical school and began to hear this from patients and so on. So thousands and thousands. And so my point was, thank you so much for saying that I was your inspiration, and I am grateful for that. And I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, that the people who inspired me that in this are the early philosophers who studied it, and also this wonderful finest human being I ever knew. George Ritchie was just the greatest guy. Yes. He had an amazing, amazing, amazing wow, you know, visitation to not just one world, but several different realms of the afterlife, as he called it. Well, what's great is that there is an extraordinary ether or um, astral, uh, many astral universes. People don't understand. Scientists know that the physical uh, universe is less than 5% of what exists. But nobody's curious about what's in the rest. And so many people now have had personal experiences in that rest of reality. And um, it was Dr. Frankly, Dr. Moody, who got us started in talking and thinking about it. So let's talk about how did you 
come up with the term near-death experiences? Obviously, it sprang to your mind. I where remember exactly from? where I was. I was on <laughs> on uh, Laurel Street in uh, Augusta, Georgia. I was a medical student, a, uh, let's see, third or second year medical student. And I was just happily writing up my, you know, I would do these interviews. I had them on tape, and I would transcribe them. And I had been doing this for some years. And uh, so in, uh, let's see, I was, it was sometime in 73, yeah, 73, and I was just sort of writing all this down, and I, my thought process was, <clears throat> you can't call them death experiences, because these people weren't really dead, because right. by definition, they, you know, if they were revived, they weren't really dead. Right. But that nonetheless they were near death because you hear that phrase all the time right that right uh, so and so is near yes. death in the hospital i mean it's just a vernacular term yes. so to me i said near death experiences because to indicate that it's the person was um close to death in a in a way that wasn't too precisely defined because it you know, it could occur in a lot of different medical circumstances, like a um, cardiac arrest or a severe infection or an incident of childbirth or oh, sure. all oh, kinds yes. of yeah. And so that was the, that was my thinking. See, I am happy that I got a PhD in philosophy and studied logic and analytic philosophy before I even went to medical school. So I had I wrote that book, you know, in such a way that it would cover all the the obvious kind of difficulties and objections that people could raise. And I you know, and so I just because I made it so obvious that, you know, it's this question of proof of life after death, that's not easy. That is something that is <laughs> maybe beyond our ken. But 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 there are new ways to do it, and that is why we, that Lisa and I are so excited about the launching. And let me give the address because, uh, because I am really enthusiastic about this project. Our address is www.theuniversityofheaven.com. And what Lisa and I were thinking about is that this information, as you know, as we all know, is just very, very important. And um, it's um, and there is also a lot of kind of unreliable information about and lore and so on that is not very well grounded. So what we want to do is, I was saying, the idea is to create a, a learning portal where we can have seminars on uh, webinars, as they call them, on um, uh, interviewing people who have had very profound near-death experiences. And primarily, uh, for, for example, our first interviewee will be Dr. Uh, Eben Alexander, who is the, the Harvard uh, neurosurgeon who had a profound near-death experience in, in uh, uh, 2008, and um, just some really wonderful physicians who've had these profound experiences. And <clears throat> so we're giving a uh, free webinar to introduce us uh, on uh, October 30th, and it's easy to find the, like I said, the address is www.theuniversityofheaven.com. And so what we have, have, you know, we want to get, like, really reliable information and directly from people who've had astounding experiences. And then as we enlarge, we also have programs that are forthcoming on grief, which is a very common phenomenon. And I have been de facto a grief 
counselor, I guess, since around 1970, actually, or 71, when I first started lecturing on these near-death experiences, people would come.